Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about what to feed your dog to stop hot spots and itchy skin. Now, I'm not going to tell you my whole story on here because it's too long. I will include a video at the end where I go into detail about my whole story with hot spots. But what you do just need to quickly know is that this little boy here, nine years ago we rescued him and his hot spots were so bad that us and the vet, we were all kind of in agreement, agreement that he maybe just had to be put to sleep because it was so bad and the vets were trying everything and nothing was working. And that's when I decided, right, it's time to forget the vets. I don't know what they're talking about. Let's look at this. Let's research this. Let's find the answers. And I very, very quickly found the answers, got him onto um, the changes and hotspots all disappeared. And he's nine and a half now and he hasn't ever had a hotspot. But I know if I stop doing all the stuff I do, they would come back. So what I do works and it has worked for the last nine years. And in those nine years, I have helped so many dogs who've had bad hotspots, bad itchy skin. And doing these things has stopped them over and over and over again. If you Google it, you will get some people saying no grains are good. It's good for their heart and all that stuff. But that all I can tell you is. We were going to, and I do not give up on dogs. So if I was saying he, this little lovely here, Albert, was suffering and that he needed to be put down, he was suffering. But I managed to sort that out. So you can, I can only tell you my experience over the last 10 years of all the dogs that um, I've got rid of hotspots for um, by doing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to quickly go through and tell you what I feed them. Now. There are lots of things that I do daily to make sure that the hotspots never come back on Albert. And I have done a video, a long video that includes them all, but I will include, um, I'll add that to the end. But in this video, I'm just going to, I'm basically, I'm doing a series of shorter videos just to break it down because I know not everybody has time. Um, and so this is just a video about what to feed your dogs. Now, if you did, only did one thing out of all the series of videos, change what you're feeding them. Because if you do all the other stuff, but you don't change what you're feeding them, you're not going to sort the problem out. You have to change what you're feeding them. You have to get to the root of what you're putting into the dog. Now, and that's really quite simple. It's grains. So grains and cereals cause, when they get into the body, they cause an irritation. And that irritation comes out through the skin, either as horrible, weeping, really painful hot spots, or as really itchy skin. And honestly, it's awful. It's horrendous for the dog. It's really, really bad. And so you need to get your dogs off grain, off food that contains grain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to read the back of the packet so you understand whether or not the food has grain in it. Now, it will say, if you look here, now this is, I'm not sponsored. It's nothing like that. You need to know if I'm showing you a product is because it's what I have researched and I've trusted and I use for my dogs. I'm not sponsored. So Barking Heads Wet Food. I've fed them this the whole time. So this was the, when it first started, this was the food I changed them onto. And I haven't changed in 10 years. Now, if you look along the bottom here, can you see there it says grain free recipe. So you've got all the good stuff and everything. Your grain free recipe. Now, what's really important is that they use grains as fillers. And because they're filling the food with grain, it means the the most important ingredient, which is the meat, is very, very low. And because these foods haven't got any grain in them, they are just the meat or the fish and then vegetables and herbs and good stuff like that. And if you look here, you see that it says there 85% and then you've got the free run chicken. So that's 85%. And that's really, really good because it means you've got 85% of the meat and then the rest of it is vegetables and stuff and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute with the composition on the back if you look at this this is a different one I feed them Harrington's and it's the same thing it's um, all natural look grain free and then if you look here it tells you that um 65 percent of the ingredients is um, a meat ingredient and that's really really good I wouldn't go ever go lower than 65 percent 85 is perfect but 65 is fine and I do use that sometimes what you need to do is you need to turn the packet over and you need to find composition. Now, my eyes are not what they used to be. I need to show you, find this for you. Hold on, bear, on, bear with me one minute while I find it. 
Right, can you see here composition? And can you see there it says, I'm hoping that I'm holding that so you can see that. And you see, you've got the 85% the chicken and that includes in the list all the different kinds of chicken. So you've got chicken broth, um, chick deep, fresh deboned chicken. And then after that, all you've got is peas, sweet potato, carrots, courgette, sunflower oil, salmon oil, seaweed. It's all natural. So you see that it's really important that you've got meat and then you've got a list of vegetables, herbs, healthy things like that. And it's the same if you look on the back of this one. Again, if we look for composition, so you're not looking for ingredients, you're looking for composition and it will tell you, I can't find it now, that's your feeding guide. Where is it? I can't find it. I saw it a moment ago. Here we go, composition. If you look, so you see there, you're looking for composition and again, freshly prepared chicken, 65%. So you've got to make sure it matches up with what they're saying on the front of the packet. Then after that, can you see it's just vegetables, so potatoes, peas, carrots, vitamins, minerals. So you see it's all good stuff. And it's all stuff that you know what it is. The greenlit muscle, that's a supplement. Yeah, really, really good supplement. Basil, parsley. And if you look at it, it's all just rosemary. It's all stuff that you actually know. No cereals and no grains. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you um, a dog food that does have the grains so you can see what you're looking for. What I want to tell you, really important, and this will only come up in a dog food that has grains in it. If you see animal derivatives, that is basically the feet, the beaks. It's not any meat. It's all the scrappy bits that they just can't use for anything else. You don't want that. You want the actual meat of the animal or the fish. Animal derivatives are just, it's worse. You know, it's the stuff off the floor they can't use. It's terrible. Never, ever feed, um, never. Animal derivatives run from it at all costs. Now, let me show you a dog food with grains in it. Um, right, something is, um, I just want to mention, is that white fish, um, we're, it's a bit hit and miss. It doesn't seem to be a problem for all dogs, but it definitely is a problem for some dogs. It's a problem for Albert. So, you know, this was probably a couple of years ago, I gave them white fish for their lunch a couple of, a couple of days in a row, and I noticed him getting itchy. And in the past, I had spoke to a Bichon breeder who told me that she knows that white fish isn't good for her dogs. So I don't know if it's just a Bichon thing or if it's all Bichons or not. I don't know. I don't know if it's all dogs. I haven't seen evidence to say that white fish definitely um, is a problem and causes hotspots. But I know with Albert, it does cause itchiness. Now, I don't know if that would have gone on to be hotspots or if it was just itchiness. And then, you know, it's... I didn't feed it to him again and the itchiness stopped. So, I, like I said, I don't know with white fish, but if you've got a dog that's itchy and you're feeding them white fish, whether that be in their food or you're actually feeding it to them, just something to have a, to, worth thinking about. Right, now I'm going to show you what you need to avoid. Now, something that's really important here is, so I really, I've just shown you, I feed my dog's barking head, so absolutely would recommend that at all costs completely and utterly what is shocking is if you look at the dry food it's shockingly bad so don't think just because one brand the wet food is really good that the dry food is going to be really good because it's not and i'm going to show you that now so this is barking heads dry food now i don't feed my dogs this ever wouldn't dream of it i just have it because i use it for video purposes and to show people when I'm telling them, you know, how to feed their dog. So this is Barking Heads. Look, just so you can see it. See, now I'm not lying. Barking Heads and it's Barking Heads dry food. Let's look at the composition. Right, for a start, the first ingredient is brown rice. So it doesn't just contain grain. The first ingredient is a grain. So brown rice is the first ingredient. Then chicken, 13%. 13%. So you remember what I said before, you want 85%, 65%, 13%. Then it gets really good. Potato, oats, barley, bit of dried chicken, some peas, some trout. And then after that, you've got chicken gravy and stuff like that. But look, oats and barley. 
So not only have you got brown rice as the first ingredient, but you've got oats and barley. I have never found a dry food that doesn't contain grain and barley and where the composition for the meat or the fish is really, really low. And that's in 10 years I've been looking for that and I've never found one. So all I can tell you is no such thing as a good dry food. No such thing. Dry kibble is just going to be bad for your dog. Now, it's, I can't emphasise this enough. I can't tell you this enough. I can't emphasise this enough. If I hadn't changed my little Albert to grain-free food, he would now be dead because the suffering was so horrendous with his hot spots that we had nowhere else to go with him. We had no other option. He was suffering so badly. He was in so much pain. He was so uncomfortable that we had no other option. And you don't know me, but what you do need to know about me is I don't give up on dogs. And for me to say, yeah, I think we're going to have to put him down. This isn't fair anymore. The other point I really want to make about this is he, we were taking him to the vets all the time. <laughs> they are absolutely useless. <laughs> they didn't have a clue. And we moved him around a bit. We saw different vets. They didn't have a clue. Not one of them ever suggested to me, ever, that I look at his diet. Now, at the time, I was feeding him, um, it was a wet food, but it did have grains in it, and the um, composition wasn't very good. I just didn't understand then. Um, that was 10 years ago. And, I mean, I think I'd just been lucky up to that point. Whereas dogs I'd had before, like German Shepherds and stuff, they'd been fine on that kind of food. But, you know, now... Their dogs aren't in this. These dogs that I've got now aren't fine on it, and the vets never once suggested that we looked at his food. Not once. They never once suggested all the other stuff that I do, and I will do. A, there'll be other videos about this. And like I said, if you need to know now, there's a long video, and I will put that at the end for you to see. It has helped to the point. Well, look, you can see his skin. Look, look, perfect little skin. He's dirty. He's always dirty. He's a dirty little boy because he's always out in the mud. But look at his skin. It's as perfect as ever. There's no hot spots. There's nothing. So don't be listening to the vets. A vet told me, or actually a couple of vets I've talked to about this. One vet told me the only, when you know when you go into a vet and there's dog food everywhere, all on the shelves and everywhere. They told me that the, that is not recommended. Well, it is recommended, but only because that's the food that the, they are selling at that time. And it has nothing to do with the food. It just depends which rep comes in and sells sells it best. It's that straightforward. You know, another another rep could come in the next day, give them a better offer, and they'll go with that. It doesn't mean that they know anything about the food at all. And another vet told me that when they um at a vet school, they're not even trained about. They'll talk. They just don't. They're not trained about dog nutrition. So they know no more than we do. And I really want you to remember that, that when they are pumping your dog full of steroids and just don't have a clue what they're doing, remember that. They don't know what they're doing um, and you really need to be researching it yourself and re watching videos like this and learning from people who've actually had dogs with bad hotspots. Now, Bichons are prone to it. They are just really prone to bad skin. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it, is, it is a problem for Bichons and it's why um, that why albert suffered so badly with it but we're sorted now and you know when he's nine and a half now so he was tiny then he was a real diddy little baby then um and and now he's nine and a half and we haven't had anything so we probably had maybe the first six months of his life was all struggling with hot spots yeah probably about that um and then so we've had nine years of absolutely nothing but and like i said before is i know that if i changed the food or stopped any of it it would all get bad again. So I wouldn't ever change any of that. So let me just make this clear um, in case it's a bit confusing. So there is a video that I recorded about a year ago or a while ago anyway. Um, it's about, it's like a half an hour video, 40 minute video. And it tells you every single thing that I do for Albert in his life to stop hotspots. Um, and then what I'm doing now is I'm doing a breakdown of videos. I'm doing a series of videos where the video, where the, it just hits one subject at a time. Um, 
and it's all a bit the videos are shorter so like so this one is about what you'll feed your dog the next one is going to be about salmon oil because salmon oil is incredibly important coconut oil all the different things that i do and i'm going to go through it video by video so um please can you um I'm, you know, I know with the longer video that I've done, so many of you have got in contact with me to tell me, you know, your story and you, that you've changed the food and it's worked. And trust me, over the years, I've been contacted so many times by people who have just got dogs who've got horrendous hot spots. I've said, get them off the grain free food, get them off the kibble. Um, and they've done that. And then they've contacted me to say it's all cleared up. And that warms my heart like I can't tell you. And please, 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 if you've got a dog with hotspots, get them off the grain-free food. Also, treats. Now, um, when Albert first came to us, I just cut all treats that had grain in them. Um, everything was completely grain-free. But the only problem with grain-free treats are they are actually rubbish and boring. And the dogs aren't that keen on them. And so, well, because he's so much better now, when I'm doing training with my boys, I do use just normal treats. Um... But I would only do that because there haven't been any hotspots for so long. So if your dog's got hotspots now, get them off the treats as well and just keep them on, you know, either just chicken or um, a bit of salmon or a treat that's grain free. That is important as well. And then as they get better, you can bring back in, you know, the smelly treats that actually do the job. Um, that's it. I'd love to hear your story. I want to know how this is going for you. If you're watching this video and you have just come across in the hot spots are just starting for you i know how awful it is i know how awful it is to watch and i know how awful it is to i just know how awful it is and you will despair i know you will be and like me you know i was up every two hours with him in the night spraying him with sprays and and that's the thing you've got to watch the other videos because i got sprays and lotions and concoctions and it's all worked really really well so go and watch them it's really worth it because i've lived this stuff i've really lived it um, but I would really, really love to hear your story. Please hear, you know, please tell me about it. I need to know um, how you're getting on and how it's all going. And other people, it will encourage other people to make the changes and to help their dog. So um, as always, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. So much more on Twitter. And on Twitter, it's great because you come into me and you're telling me um, that you've been watching, that you subscribed. And, and I love all that. And um, talk, it's just really nice. And we're building a really nice community over there. I'm on Instagram, but I... There's not much of a community happening in there. Just because all I get is people wanting me to sell things. It's driving me crazy. I, all, all I get, I post something, I just get met loads of DMs about, do you want to sell this, do you want to sell that? I don't want to sell anything. No, I don't. Go away. So um, you know, that's where I am. But on Twitter is where I really am. Um, and of course, if you've got any questions, if you're struggling, message me, comment, or however you want to get hold of me. Do it because I'm all here for helping your dogs and in, in turn helping you. So um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.